In western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh is the place to be, and rightfully so. It's a fabulous city with great restaurants, awesome entertainment, exciting sports, and the list goes on and on. While we love Pittsburgh for its big city vibe, we live and breathe in Pittsburgh's countryside, northeast of the city in the Kiskey Valley. This region is home to layers of unique history, thriving businesses, and exciting people. We're going to take you behind the scenes and give you an up-close and personal view of what makes our region tick and why you should pay us a visit. All this and more on the next Backstage Class. Take a seat. Class is about to begin. Join our hosts, Brandy Sprankel, Sherry Crony, and Jameson Geibel as they explore local talent, surrounding businesses, and hidden gems in our local community. Welcome to this first edition of Backstage Class. I'm Brandy. I'm Sherry. And I'm Jameson. Thank you so much for joining us on our first ever episode of Backstage Class. Each week, you can find us on your televisions, on Comcast Channel 190, uh, on our website, mybackstageclass.com which you can also watch from your smartphone, your computer, wherever you want to watch us from. We will be there every week going behind the scenes to businesses and people and nonprofits in and around the Kiskey Valley and beyond. Hit us up on Facebook or on our website, www.mybackstageclass.com. And you can tell us where you think we should visit next. As this is our first episode of Backstage Class, we thought it appropriate to start our adventures in our hometowns of Leechburg, and Allegheny Township, PA. The first place we visited is about a mile from my house and from Brandy's house in Gilpin Township. It's Kasanicki Farms. It's a local family-owned business. We met with Michael, Matthew, and Katie. They showed us all about how they tend to their award-winning championship pigs. And I personally am a huge fan of bacon. I don't know about you guys. Yes, we yes. like bacon. If you have difficulty telling the difference between the pigs, you'll have even more difficulty telling the difference between Michael and Matthew. Because the twins. twins. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was very hard. Yeah, and they even wore like similar outfits that day. There is like a crazy amount of work that goes into preparing these pigs for, um, I guess, sh for a show. Now, do you feel that they know if you eat meat or not? Like if I'm by a cow and I ate a hamburger, I would be uncomfortable. I don't think they can sense your appetite, no. However, they did. Sherry ate a club sandwich right before we got there, with and they bacon. did bite her toe. With bacon. So I think that, maybe there might be something to that theory. It's time to take a look at the world of pig pageantry at Kasanicki Farms. Hello again. I'm at Kasanicki Farms with Michael, Katie, and Matthew. And today I'm going to learn about pigs, which I know nothing about. That's why I'm standing deadly still so they don't attack. Uh, Michael, thanks for having me. I know you're a little dirty because you're a hard worker. That's okay. <laughs> Now, apparently, Kastanicki Farms pigs are very, very successful at being pigs. Why? What do you guys do with them? Well, we walk them out every day. Um, when it gets into, into July, we start walking them twice a day, and then you have to, like, train them to keep their heads up and be able to make them walk all the time. Now, are these pigs that I would go to the grocery store and buy bacon from, or do you yeah. have a different purpose? Well, these ones, they will show them, and then when it comes down to the day that we sell, um, there's a cell, and then some of them will actually go to be um, bre to be bred to be like mothers, and then s some of them will actually will be like the ones you find in your produce. When you say that you show pigs, what do you mean? Like you, it's not, it's so much like showing for like showing who has like the best pig that so can be like the market. So it's like a contest. Yeah. Tell me about it. It's like pretty much you your pig is goes in, you like try to get it all nice shiny, and then it goes in, and then you they like. It's, a, it's like a market show, uh -huh. and they um, pick like who has like the best quality pig. Like, how do pig. they gauge how good a pig is? Well, there is actually classes you have to go to. Like, it's called judging teams, uh -huh. and you go on to them, and then you'll people will actually be all over the state going to um, these show, go to, like to judge these shows, and they'll judge them by like their hams, like the quality, like. The inside, uh -huh. of, like the shoulders wide, and then like your loin. I've heard, yeah. I've heard from you that you're really good with pigs. So, well, like this part right here, that's um, you'll train them by like hitting them like in this side, like right. If you hit them like right in the face, they'll turn for you. Uh huh. And so then, like if you, okay, so like if yeah. you tap them on the left side of the face, they move to the right. Yeah. And if you tap them, I um, guess on the right side yeah. of the face, they move to the left. And then if you tap them like in a little bit like in the stomach, they'll walk for you. Okay. Now what's going to happen to these pigs? Are they going to be in shows? Yeah, that they'll all, 
all of them will be in shows. Once all we have, every pig will pretty much be in a show. Like, there are two different. pig noise. We haven't had that yet. That's good. <laughs> there's two different classes. There's a carcass and then there's a market. Okay. The carcass, What's the difference? Well, the market's more like your quality that, like, will go into, like, the um, higher top, like, into your restaurants. Uh -huh. And then, like, your carcass will, like, be the ones that goes into, like, your, uh -huh. um, pretty much like your um, produce and everything. Now, I assume, because you have prize-winning pigs here at Cassiniki Farms, you have to take very good care of these pigs. Yeah. And you have some type of container behind you. Yeah. What is this? This is what we take to every show with all of our products, like your hair products. Would you brush. care to show it off? Yeah. So They're what like, am I seeing here? Like, all right here is all of our hair products. This is, this right here is, um, you can, they can't drink um, certain kinds of water. Okay. So, like, if it has a little bit of chlorine, because your regular water has chlorine in it, uh -huh. they can't drink that. Ha we had to put this on it, and they'll have to um, it will filter it through so they can drink it. So pigs actually have a very nice life. Filtered yeah. water, shampooed and conditioned? Every day. And that's in there? Yeah. Your shampoo's right here, and then your conditioner is here. And that's with these two, but these are um, for certain, like, these are show products, like, for just show day. Now, I have a genuine question, because I've never been on a farm. This is my first time. What do pigs eat? Do we, um, it's, like, it's a grain. It has, like, corn, barley, oats wheat, and then they'll have like molasses in it. Oh, that sounds sweet and delicious. Yeah. And you said you have to wash these pigs, right? Yeah. Now, are we going to get a demonstration of that? That sounds yeah. messy and exciting, potentially. It's not really that messy. No? You get wet, kind of. We're on the wash bay at Kazaniki Farms with Matthew and Katie, and they are going to show us how they clean the pigs. And first, I heard, overheard earlier, you clean the pigs twice a day or once a day? Once. Once, once a, a day. day. And what's the process? Um, they'll go for a walk first in the mornings, okay. and we want to do it when it's cool because they don't have pores, so they can't sweat like humans do. So we bring them up here and cool them off, and then they get a bath because you want their hair to be as soft as yours, and you want the white pigs and the black pigs to be as clean as possible, but the white pigs will stain. And the white pigs will get have more um, thin hair, and the black pigs have more coarse hair. So what do you use? Just like on the white pigs, we use bright lights, and it's like a <laughs> it's a stain buster. Stain buster. Yeah, and then is that like bleach? In a way, you don't want to put too much on them though, because we've actually turned a pig purple one time <laughs> from doing it. And then on the black pigs and the white pigs, you put clear choice. Okay. All right, and I also see the pigs, uh, they appear to have some earrings. Like, what's that about? Those are tags. The, um, they're in the ear, and they're the identification for the fair, so that they, we tag them in, and um, they have to know what tag number it is so that they know that you registered this pig and you're not just bringing in some other pig that you bought somewhere else because it looked nicer. Now, they enjoy this. They like being washed like this. Yes, pigs are actually very clean. They're very clean animals. They like to be clean. They only rolling in muds just to. It's just to cool them off because they don't have pores. Do you think these pigs are friends? Like, do they hang out? Yeah, they. Um, you you actually have to switch pig pens every once in a while, like because they get too used to having one another there. So then, if we take one out by itself, it sort of throws like a ten temper tantrum because it wants to be back with its other friend. So they sort of have a bond. Now, do you get them when they're little piglets? Yeah. The like how big Matthew, is a piglet? Like this? Yeah, Michael and Matthew will raise them whenever they birth their own pigs. They're, they're about two pounds when they're born. And these are only six months old, and we weighed them the other day, and they, crazy. <laughs> they range between, right now, 147 to 160 pounds. The bacon's on the side, and like, it will come from down to here, and you want like a fattier bacon. Do you think they know what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, do you feel like we should cover I their I hope ears? not. <laughs> Yeah. They sense it because I had a club sandwich and there was <laughs> no. They can't sense it. We did totally just there. eat bacon. I feel bad. <laughs> they can sense your moods though. Like if you're upset, they might not cooperate as well. So when you show the pigs, like what do you get out of showing the pigs? Um, at like the jackpot shows is what we've been showing them at right now. You get a premium, which is from whatever placing you win. It's just like a, f a few extra dollars. And then whenever we go to the fair, we have a livestock sale, and that's where we show them for their market, and then you sell them to be butchered. So you're a pageant mom. Basically. You're a pageant mom We're, we're and like dad. a pageant family. Okay. Of you're, pigs. Yes, we're like the, the toddlers and tiaras with pigs. Do they bite you? I mean, he looks pretty ticked off right now. She, 
Oh, she'll she. nip at you, and he he's pretty docile. They just don't like it with their ears, and if you get water in their ears, they hang their head to one side because the water's lying in there. So you guys are all in 4-H in what, Armstrong County? Yes. Okay, so then you just represent Armstrong County in like yeah. age groups? Um, you have different clubs, like you have, it's called the Triple S Club or the Dayton Livestock or Tri-County. Are you just, in all of those things? No, you can only be in one 4-H club. So you, which one are you in? Uh, we're in Dayton Livestock. Make a Livestock. shout out. Make a shout out. What is it? Dayton Livestock. Dayton Livestock. Dayton Livestock. I skin. Okay. Yeah. Get a little, look, they're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to the barn. That's where they go after every bath. Oh wait, I'm really not walking mine. Mine's Why walking me. You yeah, you just spray them like all over on their butt too. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't want to waste it. It's so expensive. And then you, oh, it's perfectly fine. That's how much they need. And then you just brush it in. That brush is like the champion brush we call it. This is a champion brush. Yeah, ever since we started, we've had it, and it's been. We've had champions ever since Michael and Matthew have won every single year at the fair since they started. If you're going to judge them right now, like who's, would you say is better? Matthews. What? No, you mine. <laughs> Matthews. <laughs> well, I don't know. These two are pretty close. So is that good? You have to do it the whole way in or? That one will stick out a little bit more since it's black. Is that it? So then you do that. You brush it for 20 minutes. Yes. At, yeah. Like you, just so that you want their hair nice and brushed in and. Just, they're rocks? just eating the, well, they will eat rocks because no, the rock if their like stomach's the upset, they'll eat coal. eat it for like the iron and coal in it. Why are their oh. ears cut like that? They're yeah, not, they're like ruffleish. and that happens in every single yeah. litter. It tells it what number it was in the litter. Oh. oh. Pigs don't what? bite, do they? They'll nibble. They're eating my feet. <laughs> oh my God, he's eating my feet. <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys so much for having us today. Thank you thank for you coming Katie. out. Thank, thank you. you. Matthew, yep. okay, and Michael. Michael we got thank it. You. Thank you, Thank guys. you so much. The most comments uh, that I got from the pilot of being on the farm was my choice of shoe attire that day. Uh, not a wise choice. Uh, I th I, in my head, I honestly thought I wasn't trying to be ridiculous. I was thinking farm, like cowboy hat and boots. And those were the only boots that I had, and they were just extremely high off the ground. And I'm already a foot taller than Cherry and Jameson, so I looked like huge. I looked like a monster walking around that farm. I don't even know if you can really call it walking because I was stumbling all over the place, trying not to fall. Um, it, was, uh, it was a learning experience, and I, I think I really need to think about my wardrobe sometimes when I'm on these uh, missions to find out things about businesses and organizations. After my visit to Kastanicki Farms, I felt that after seeing the life of a pig that I could possibly become a vegetarian. It lasted about four hours and I was eating meat again. So the, I don't think that seeing how farm animals live will ever make me become a vegetarian. So I like to give a big shout out to bacon because I love it. Don't touch that dial. Class is back in session after the break. Save big when you buy local at Sprinkles Neighborhood Markets. Start with our incredibly fresh produce. Nobody beats Sprinkles prices. The homemade goodness of our bakery selections have delicious written all over them. Four generations of Sprinkle family butchers ensure the highest quality fresh cut meats priced with your family's budget in mind. And no one can pass up our fantastic deli selections. I'm Randy Sprankle, and I'm here to tell you, if you're buying your meat at another store, you're paying too much money. So we're really excited about today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. We have put a lot of work into this show, and we've had a lot of help along the way. And a big help was from Picture Perfect Hair Studio. Julie and Crystal have helped us up so much. They've yes. done our makeup and hair for all of our photo shoots and our pilot and our test shots. And we just love them and want to give a shout out to them today. I no, like to if they can them. teach you how to shave, that'd be great. No, I would never, never do that. However, I never put product in my hair. Okay, I did in seventh grade and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> and I spiked it up and I thought it was really, really hip. Long time ago. Long time, yeah. yes. But now, now that I know how to actually use hairspray, it's working very well. And we owe that all to Crystal and Julie. Thank you so much. Thank for you. For perfecting this man. Thanks for looking, looking good today. Since we 
did start the day taking care of pigs, we felt it would be only appropriate to reward ourselves with an adult beverage, which brings us to our favorite place to drink wine in my neck of the woods, Allegheny Township, to the Wooden Door Winery, which is the wine haven of Allegheny Township. It was and we will say, it is a new wine haven to us, as we did not know it was there. They actually moved a barn. Mm -hmm. They took pieces of the uh, right. barn down, and they moved it and reconstructed a barn, yes. turned it into an absolutely Absolutely stunning. It is decor. It's incredible. But incredible. It was. It was great. Yes. It was fabulous. And delicious. Delicious. We loved yes. it. We're headed to Allegheny Township to talk with Jeff Pollock. He's the owner of Wooden Door Winery, a winery right in our neighborhood that we didn't even know existed. And here we are in the beautiful. Wooden Door Winery. This is Jeff Pollock. He's been nice enough to have us here very graciously to sample his wine. Jeff, thank you. Nice thank to you. see you. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here. I drive past this winery that's in Allegheny Township all the time, and I never knew it was here because there are no labels anywhere. Why is that? We started when we opened last August. We basically uh, did Facebook, people in our phones, and just from our contacts and friends and family, uh, it's kind of imploded and exploded as far as people are coming here. A lot of people that come here really enjoy themselves and, and it's not overcrowded and we have a lot of wine drinkers that go to other wineries and, and have to wait for a table. And uh, I think some of our business that's been coming here tells us how great it is because it is peaceful and so we want to kind of keep that atmosphere here. This this winery has brought my family closer than it ever has been. It is really really nice. Um, are you open every day? We are only open currently right now Fridays and Saturdays. Now yeah. you make the wine here. This everything, is wine. Is everything is made here. Yes. Yeah so like what started this? You were just drinking wine one day and thought I have this I have this lot next to my house. There's so many gonna... there's so many <laughs> <laughs> there's so many parts to the puzzle but um I started as a little hobby with a, uh, I worked with a lady that actually, um, her husband made wine, so okay. I got a kit and really fell in love with it and we started making anything that we could ferment over in our kitchen, we were doing it, we made, uh, we really got into making like fruit wines and banana wine and things like that. Um, but then also we, we would go up northeast every year and we, we got invited back to a winery, it was beautiful, scenic. And on the, ride, on the ride home, I said, we can do this. I know I can do this. So we had had horses in here. We had, I got my Oh, this kids is a barn? Back. This is a barn. This, was, this is a nice barn. This is the most beautiful yeah. yeah. barn I've yeah. ever Well, it didn't look like this. We were just in far. a barn. Yeah, we, but actually, oh just in the last six, eight months, it's, I really want it to be something that my kids take over. And if my kids can't find a job or like right before you guys came today, we bottled 300 bottles. And it was my wife, my daughter, my son, and I. So that's awesome. So recently I was on a trip and you said that you were figuring out what you could ferment. Mm -hmm. I was in Florida and there was a bottle of tomato wine. Mm -hmm. What constitutes wine? Like I thought always wine was grapes, like fermented grapes. Obviously that's not no. the case. They say anything that grows that you can basically, you can ferment out. Fermentation is when you add yeast and you'll take those sugars that are in, in anything from flowers to, you know, and you'll convert them and you'll burn them off into, and what makes the alcohol is when you take that sugar process and you, and you convert it over into alcohol. How is that process, your actual professional process, is there like a commercial different from process my internet versus like a witchcraft? Yeah. Um, they're basically similar. I've mm -hmm. learned a lot of tips and in, 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 in the wine industry, um, I've met they're, they're the nicest people out there, and everybody likes to give their own all... tips and <laughs> trades. And <laughs> they're all so, drinking wine. <laughs> yeah, so, so I've learned a lot of things that I used to do that um, maybe the typical homemaker would do, but I've, I've learned just in, in a quick process of things that you can do differently to, to make sure that it doesn't turn out like your grape juice. Well, you said the first wine you ever made was a Chardonnay, right? Mm -hmm. What is your specialty here at the Wooden Door Winery? Uh, there's a few. We have, a, we have some unique blends. Um, one was an accident. One of our most popular is called Guilty Pleasures. Now people would think that that is something that, you know, like a sexual connotation thing to go along with that. And it's really so not. 20% alcohol by volume. But we let people believe that. But uh, what it is, is basically I was making a Riesling and 
uh, when, when I was transferring from different, um, racking it off from one uh, stainless tank to another, I was putting four tanks into one. And uh, my daughter made a mistake and made a, she labeled a Riesling when it was a Catawba. So, and I could tell automatically as soon as I started pumping it in there that it was not Riesling. And then I said to her, I go, you know, Lexi, did you do something? And she goes, yeah, I think I made an extra one or two. <laughs> well, you know, basically about $1,200 of Riesling was no longer a pure Riesling. So basically, and, and what happens in the wine is when you blend something, you can call it whatever you want. You know, and then you just have to get it approved through the liquor control board. But when it's oh. pure, if it's pure Concord or pure Riesling, it, you can't change you the can't name change of that. The name. Yeah. So, so you had this batch that could not be called by its pure form. Right. So I sat down, cried for a little bit, <laughs> threw some things, and then I called a friend who is a vinter, and he said, I think it's going to turn out really well. And it did, and we, we loved it. And, and it is, it's my most popular. I think one of the things that we do do, and it was out of uh, low finances, is we were making wine and we do gravitational fall. We don't filter. We, st we are filtering a little bit of our wines now, but basically when you, when you make wine, it starts out as a must, and then uh, every six, eight weeks, you have all of your yeast and your sediment that will fall off, and then you pull off the good wine, and then you discard the, the, the must at the bottom. And then the more you do that, it keeps clarifying into where you have really nice crystal clear wine. So the decor here is pretty spectacular. Um, a lot of it looks like it's, re is it reclaimed wood? It's like original wood on these pillars? There's a barn that, that uh, fell down about five miles away from here. Uh, my brother told me, once you go talk to the guy? And we just talked about it. I just got some more beams off them that we're going to keep on adding to the, to the place. But uh, everything come off of a local barn that just fell over. And well, Jeff, if the wine tastes half as beautiful as this building looks, I say we give I'm it a try. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to dive right I'm... in. All right, Jeff. It's the moment of truth. Which one is that? Well, I'd like to give you some guilty pleasures. Now, what you're going to smell here is a, uh, a Riesling and a Catawba wine blend. And it's a little fruity. But also what you'll taste in there is you'll taste a little bit of citrus from the Catawba wine. Are you going to teach me to waft so I can yeah. properly smell Don't we this? have to swirl this around? It's actually easiest if you keep it flat. Oh. You know, really? you can do that. And then what, do you, what they say really is... really do something. Really. It'll, get you, it'll get your aromas out. <laughs> okay. But then what people, if you ever say it has nice legs, if you've ever heard that mm -hmm. in the wine business, is once your wine starts to settle, you'll see uh, there will be little leg marks that'll come down, you'll see your wine start, and, it'll, and that basically tells the body of the wine. So All right. Cheers, mate. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. This is wonderful. right up my alley. That, this is I'm so having good. nostalgic memories of my grandma's house. They had grapevines on their mm -hmm. back porch. It's very good. Most people don't give out their blends, most vinters, really but uh, so. Well, this is um, something to be proud of. So yeah, we'll just keep you. it amongst the four of us, correct? <laughs> yes, I. Right. <laughs> what you're going to eat now is we have our perfect partners, which is our one of our most popular here at the winery. And while you drink them, I'm going to grab our chocolate mm, wine. That's even better. What's the alcohol content in these? Everything is um, made at about 12 and a half. 12 and a half percent. Really? Because mm -hmm. you cannot taste that, yeah. which is no. huh, yeah. dangerous. So smooth. And our last one that you're going to try today is, it's called Cocolata Vino. It's a chocolate wine. How did you come up with the name? It, well, we wanted to be, we think outside the box, and we didn't want to call it just chocolate wine. Mm -hmm. So um, Cocolata is Slovak. I'm Polish and Slovak. Looks beautiful. But then again, everything in this nervous. establishment does. This is a big yeah. seller for us. <laughs> Uh, we have people here at the winery that will take our cherry wine. We have about 20 wines at the, um, out at almost all times. Yeah, like chocolate covered cherry type? Yeah, and what they'll do is they'll blend the cherry and then chocolate. It smells, that's good. I'm wafting you as... wafting? All forms of media have taught me to waft. <laughs> oh, like this. It smells really good. It smells like chocolate. I'm ready. Mm, I really like it. It's not bad. I like it. How much would a bottle of wine cost? Is it across the board the same, or is it different? No, all, of, all of our wines are um, anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars oh, here. Oh, that's yeah. super so affordable. Here at the winery, you can buy a glass, 
um, we serve by the glass or you can buy a bottle. Uh, a lot of people come out, they'll sit. Um, we have a caterer here now, so they'll, they'll come out. What kind out. of food does a caterer bring? He has the most fabulous gourmet burgers right now. Uh, Tommy Skanga from Tommy's Catering has been here a lot. We've had some different caterers that have come in. But, um, so right now we have this gourmet burger bar. I know this weekend uh, he's making calzones with pulled pork. So we try to change it up a lot. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. So Thank nice you. What an absolute you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much. My favorite wine at Wooden Door Winery, which I always give a shout out to Brandy on this, was Perfect Partners because we go so well together and it was my favorite wine. It was really good, really good. I cannot emphasize that enough. A friend of mine, who will remain nameless, taught me to waft wine, and it makes you feel so much more classy when you're drinking wine. You have to play the part in life. I pretend I know what I'm doing in front of the camera, and as long as I do that, it works. So I pretend, when I'm wafting my wine, that it tastes even better than it does. Well, it's that time of the show where we are going to give away a prize to a lucky Facebook fan. Uh, this week's prize is provided by Leechburg Floral. Specifically, Leechburg Floral is opening a new business um, called Forget Me Not by Leechburg Floral Company. Uh, Leechburg Floral is obviously in Leechburg, and Forget Me Not is right down the street and features all dried flower arrangements, wreaths, um, and other things having to deal with dried flowers. Uh, this week's lucky Facebook winner picked at random is Julie Pater. So make sure you, the viewers out there, like us on Facebook. It's very important, and you can win a cool prize. All right, guys, that wraps up our first episode of Backstage Class. Did it. You excited? Did it. I am excited. I am relieved more so. After <laughs> meeting the two of you, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I'm impressed. This is good. This we was did. fun, too. I think we have a good platform, and we have so many good ideas to come in the next 13, 12 weeks. 13 weeks of a season. Yes. We have 12 more weeks of fun. So we have 24 more topics that we're going to delve into on Backstage Class. And I've actually learned something, and that's what I'm all about. We've done a lot of fun things together, so I hope everyone tunes in for our next show to see the adventures that the three of us get ourselves into. There is much more to come. Exactly, and look for us um, around your community, and we want to say a special thanks to Tom Sable, who was a generous photographer who took our pictures and gave us our proof so we could use that on our marketing materials. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank yeah, you. and what are we up to next week? Next week. We're going to be kayaking. Jameson, you were fabulous kayaking. Mm. A little scary. A little scary for Jameson, but we're going to kayak, and we're also going to look into the life of... Crown molding. That's right. The life of right. crown molding. Uh, if it does have a life... Um, well, trees were at one point alive. Yeah, <laughs> they're not alive in this They thing. died so Holy. you can have beautiful homes. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to be at Obie Milling in Spring Church uh, with Dan Obriot, and he's going to tell us about how his business operates and how you can take advantage of the products of his labor. So we'll see you then. Check us out. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. If you've ever wanted to advertise your business on television and thought maybe it was out of your price range, this is the show for you. We're going to be on Comcast Channel 190, which reaches over 95,000 households. In addition to that, we're going to really sync together different forms of media. Uh, we're going to be on Facebook, Twitter, and we're going to have a website, www.mybackstageclass.com, where you will be able to link your website to our website. So call us today to advertise your business on Backstage Class. Check one. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> that was supposed to be what the wine was for. <laughs> Sometimes I laugh a lot uncontrollably. <laughs> I cannot do oh, that. That's so funny. <laughs> <Good. laughs> this is how you seven million people. I don't like seven million.